If you're at the IT help desk right now, really dreading every time that phone rings or a customer walks in or every ticket that you get, you're not alone. IT help desk is usually the first place someone starts out in their IT journey. It's also the hardest place to get out of. A lot of help desk jobs are the black hole. I was stuck in IT low level entry level jobs for years. So in this video, I'm gonna go over step by step on how to get out of the IT help desk. You may just want a job where you don't have to consistently talk to people on a daily basis. I can understand that. And so in this video, I'm gonna go over step by step on how you can get out of the IT help desk and upgrade into any job in the tech field, whether that is cybersecurity, cloud, AI. So the first step and one that is probably the hardest and was for me was you really need to acknowledge where you are. Okay, I had about five years of experience and I was still stuck in these like lower level IT jobs. Help desk, system administrator, network administrator. I was maybe like oblivious to the fact that I was stuck in these lower paying, lower challenging types of roles and I wasn't really progressing. If you've been spending five, six, seven or even 10, 15 years in the help desk, really acknowledge where you are. Face the facts and then once you acknowledge that, then you can make a plan to move on. Really figure out what you don't like about it. A lot of people are in denial about what they don't like about their IT help desk job. For instance, for me, I really didn't like the phones ringing on a consistent basis. Everyone blames the IT help desk for all of their problems that happen on a daily basis. If you forward a ticket to the wrong group, that is your fault. If you didn't get enough details from the customer, that is also your fault. If you just didn't know how to fix it and then escalate it to tier two because that's what you thought you were supposed to do, that's also your fault. But maybe that was actually your fault. The next step is you need to acknowledge where you want to be. If you just want and you have this longing to get out of the IT help desk into a higher paying job, you're not really going to get anywhere. I did a lot of wishful thinking. Oh, I wish I made more money. I wish I didn't have this job, but honestly, I had no idea where I really wanted to go. And because I didn't know, I never really took action or because it was so vague of a plan, like, oh, I, I want another job that pays more and people are nicer. That was maybe as defined as I got. You want to be specific about the kinds of jobs you want, what type of workplace you want. If you just say that you want a job within cybersecurity, that is also really vague and can pull you into a million different directions to where you're basically just going to accept anything that comes along that has the word security in it, even though they might be lying to you and saying that it's a security job and really it's just patch management or something of that sort. Make sure to know the specific job that you want that way you know exactly where you're headed. For instance, right now I'm learning all about AWS cloud security because number one, I find it the most interesting. And number two, that is the type of job that I want. More specifically than that, securing applications within cloud. Look at all of those buzzwords. The third step is to actually take action and actually do what you want to do. For me, I was, I had certifications, degrees, I even had experience, but I was never really able to move on. That is because I never actually did the thing that, that I really wanted to do. Meaning I never set up any labs. I never sought out to actually gain the actual skills. I was so stuck in this degree land and certification land, and I'm the person who actually read a technical book. All of that, honestly, is a waste of time. You just need to actually do the thing. This is called just-in-time learning, meaning you only learn the concepts as you need them. I find this to be way more effective in learning something than if you just watch lecture by lecture or read book by book or take certification after certification without actually doing it. It's even been shown that book learning oftentimes doesn't translate to actual learning. This is a concept from the unschool mind, how children think and how schools should teach. His theory is that there are college level physics grads that are unable to solve problems that are even slightly different than what they had encountered in their schooling. The knowledge that you learn in school actually doesn't really transfer to the real world, 
especially because you're going to be seeing so many different types of problems. That is why just setting up your home lab and then figuring things out as you go will give you a more solid base of how to troubleshoot different problems in the real world. Learn way more by crafting your own project then learning those skills and being introduced to those skills, then going through any certification, lecture. The fourth step after you start playing around with all of these technologies and all of that is you're going to want to create an online portfolio that is targeted for your specific job. An online portfolio is really underrated, especially in cybersecurity. It's really common in software development. Almost no one has a portfolio of work in cybersecurity. If you can actually create a project around your specific targeted job, then you will be a step ahead. This is what is called an ultra learning project. So you can gain those skills and you can prove them to a potential employer without having to do the song of dance of tons of different courses, of different degrees. Don't just do random projects that aren't related to your targeted job. For instance, if you want to do cloud secure, there's no point in doing say alert and triage. The next step is to job hunt and interview and negotiate. This was actually a place that I failed at for a really long time time because I didn't really understand how the job market was. Now I'm specifically talking about the United States of America job market. I'm not really sure about any other job market, but in America, it's actually a little confusing. There is startup companies and private companies. And then there are large public corporations such as Chase Bank. There are also state level jobs. There are also federal jobs. And then there are also like federal contractor and state contractor type of roles. All of these industries, they all have different ways that you would apply to their jobs. For instance, if you want a federal job, that resume is going to be entirely different than say, if you want to go work at a startup, they value totally different things and they require different types of resume. And if you want to go work at say an education institution in the U S you need a really lengthy CV and tons of credentials. But if you want to work say at a startup, Honestly, they don't really care about degrees or certifications or any of that. It's much easier to get a job at a smaller company than it is a large bureaucratic company. And if you want to work for the government, you 100% need a type of certification or a degree. A way around all of these like rules and filters and things is to network and get a referral from someone in the company because then they'll pass your resume to someone who will actually look at your resume best way. If you are going to allocate your time, I would say maybe allocate it towards a lot of your time towards networking and going to conferences and attending online communities and things of that sort. On top of this, another huge mistake a lot of people do, especially coming from the help desk who are trying to upgrade into say cybersecurity is they don't negotiate or they just accept whatever comes along. If you're working at the IT help desk, you're probably making like maybe 60 to $80,000. I'm guessing that is about what I made 60 to 80,000 when I was in those kind of lower level jobs. When you go to negotiate, you don't realize how much that position might actually pay. You can actually ask for the range about how much they will pay. They will a hundred percent lowball you because you're coming from the IT help desk. You might think a jump in 15 to 20 K. So around a hundred K is a ton of money, but in reality you could be getting paid 110 to 130. So you could get a raise of actually $50,000, but a lot of people have a hard time making such a large leap. I know I did. It was also a mistake because I could have maximized my earning potentials, but I didn't because number one, I was too afraid just to ask. And number two, I just thought it was just too much money. <laughs> Don't be like that. Some common pitfalls that you're a hundred percent going to have is number one, you're going to feel really doubtful that you can really ever do it. You're going to think it's pointless or you're like, I've been working at it help desk for 10 years. Why would I even really want to make the change? I'm not good enough. I was fired from that one job. So I'm somehow not technically competent. The thing is all of that is BS. I, even if people have told you, there were people who told me I should go do something else because 
I didn't have technical ability. And this was early on in my career. No matter what anybody tells you, if you have the desire to do it, you 100% can. So you can 100% change your career from help desk, no matter how technically competent you think you are or you're not. It's just a skill and you can gain the skill. The next one is a lack of community. This one I didn't fully understand until I joined a community that I'm like motivated to be better because of the community. Don't join just any community when you're trying to change your career from IT to cybersecurity or something of that sort, but really find a community of high caliber types of people who are motivated and will push you. There's a lot of communities that Honestly, I don't like, and there's a lot of negativity in there and, and sadness, I guess. I would probably stay away from those communities and try to choose one with more ambitious and motivated people, like I know you are. The next one is not exactly knowing what to do. Now this can be really hard because if you don't really work in say cybersecurity, you're not really going to know exactly what to do. And on top of that, cybersecurity is not really well documented. And then a lot of the information that is documented is outdated or not very good or organized. It can be extremely difficult. That is why you have to know what exactly your targeted job is because otherwise you're going to be pulled into a thousand different directions, sign up for this program or sign up for that program. And you'll just be all over the place signing up for all of these programs, but getting absolutely nowhere. Make sure to know what your targeted job is and don't change it. Just go forth until you get a job in that one field because it is possible. There's tons and tons of opportunity. This is a shameless plug, but I do have upskill to cyber that I have created where I will actually help you learn the basics of cybersecurity through projects. I'll also help you craft a ultra learning project for your targeted job. This is different than a cybersecurity boot camp. Usually cybersecurity boot camps have you doing all of the same curriculum. This is more curated to your own professional goals from people who actually work in cybersecurity and can help you craft a project for your targeted job. Upskilled as cyber is highly customized to you, your current level and your career goals. If you are interested, you can go ahead and there's a link below and you can apply on upskill2cyber.com and hopefully I will see you there. Bye.